Despite what their moms told them, they just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot and really a disloyal person. This is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Sunday. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe at Cuse Militia on the socials. Go there. Join the militia. Thank you for tuning in to hang out with us. We appreciate all of you. This is your Rutgers post-game show. You'll hear from us, and we'll hear from you in fan feedback. And all of our thoughts will be aired on the 17-7 loss uh, to the Scarlet Knights in the home opener for the Orange. But first, let's take a listen to what a frustrated Dino Babers had to say following the game. The decision to take out Tommy and put in Schrader, was that something that you had before the game, or is that a game-time decision based on what was happening in the first quarter? For the game. Hey, Dino, we didn't get a, a clear picture of what happened, the play where Michael got the penalty called on him and then seemingly... You maybe got whistled as well. Can you walk us through what happened, what they said to you, and all of that? I'm not quite sure what happened. I thought I saw a play, and I'm trying not to get fined. I thought I saw a play where we tackled a guy, and he got pushed back. And then I asked. I was sitting there waiting. I'm like, I saw a personal foul call being called. And I'm like, I, I didn't see a targeting. I didn't. I'm trying to figure out how the personal foul thing got called. And... Uh, when they came over and told me, they said that he was picked, the back was picked up and body slammed. Now, I couldn't see it, so you guys have to help me with that. And I was like, I didn't see anybody body slam anybody. Uh, and I got a personal foul penalty called against me. I don't, you can go back and check it, Stephen, because I know you'll do a good job. But as far as I know, I've never, I know I've never had a personal foul penalty called on me as a head coach. I know I've never had one called on me as an assistant coach, and I'm pretty doggone sure I've never had one called on me as a player, and I've been playing since the 60s. So I didn't use any profanity, but I guess my English was too strong. Dino, were you aware of how animated Coach Chiano was on the other end towards the officials, especially after the personal foul on call on you? You know, you're, you're the second or third person that's told me this after the game, and the answer is no. I didn't – I couldn't see him. But I, I had everybody in my ear talking about he – I don't know. I did not see him. So uh, I was – I don't want to say anything more. I, I couldn't see him, so I don't know how animated he was to answer your question. Coach, what went into the decision to take out James Williams for Colby Parker in the fourth quarter? We were executing a very unique kick in that situation, and uh, our second punter was better than our first punter at doing it in practice. He had demonstrated that over and over again. Yeah, but when we put him in the game for the very first time, he didn't do so well. Hey, Coach, fans back in the Dome, how do you feel that affected your team, especially on the defensive end? Oh, I thought it was a huge plus. I think it was a huge plus for the offense as well. We, I remember we had some plays in the, in the first half offensively we didn't make. We had a... I want to say one or two balls to uh, one of our receivers, which I won't use by name because you guys know how I am, that I thought were catchable. You know, we had a ball turned over on the five-yard line. We missed a field goal early. There's 10 points right there, and, and we're not sitting here. We're in overtime down there. So that's how football is, though. You've got to make those plays to make your life a lot easier, and we didn't make those plays today, and that was disappointing. I'm not going to talk about Garrett and his status because that'd be too much of an advantage for our next opponent. But obviously, if he wasn't in the game, you know, it's something that we need to we need to deal with. I thought that uh, AC came in and played a really good game uh, uh, for Garrett, but obviously we need Garrett to get better. You know, we have one of our better players not out on their football field, and then the other thing is Garrett's very involved in special teams as well. So not only did it affect our defense, but it affected our special teams. First of all, last year, I'm not going to – that doesn't matter to me. The thing that matters is we're not going to do this again this year. And uh, we need to be better. As coaches, we need to be better. And as players, we need to be better. That's the bottom line. 
All right, the coach montage is brought to us by the Spotify Green Room app. Go there. I've been talking about this long enough. The buildup has been long enough. It is time for you to act. What you need to do is you need to go to your iOS or Android stores, download the app. All you need is a username and email address and find a password. Any, any password other than password will probably work great. Go there, download the app. It's free. It is a way for you to follow us. Uh, you get notifications, sign up for those. And when we go live for fan feedback, you will get notified. And you can get on there. You can either chat in the green room or you can request to speak and get on with us. And the best part is you don't have to just hang out with us. You can hang out with other people. You can follow other people or you can start your own thing. You can get on the Spotify green room app and start your own thing. We are at either Sean Space Q Smusha or Q Smusha. If you have trouble, just let me know. We'll get you there. I know that some people had some trouble, so uh, we will get you there. Again, it's free, iOS or Android store. Download the app today. Username, password, email address. It's all you need. It's super easy. Go do it. All right, Joe. So, sir, let's start with the montage. And Ugh. real quick, um, I included the you know the decision to um, put Garrett Trader in for um, Devito in there because we all knew it was before the game. Coach was very fr- I've never seen Dino Babers this frustrated during a press conference. So obviously coming into this game, we heard that we were going. We knew we were going to see both quarterbacks, and we can talk about the timeliness of that. We can talk about how it was done. With getting series, I was under the impression that maybe we would have a um, kind of a modified game plan as far as when we would use each quarterback, not necessarily getting their own series. But okay, we went with series. A little bit questionable on that end, uh, as far as the time of it. But um, it would guess it was good to get him in there. Problem is, is, I don't think it's good for either quarterback to do that at that point in the game. And I mean, I could be wrong, but I, I want to get your opinion. Uh, this is where you uh, say stuff. Well, I mean, I don't really, it's tough because I don't really have one, especially it's, it's tough to have something that's scripted because, you know, I listened to Tommy DeVito's press conference too. And he basically, I mean, he admitted that he, that he knew it was coming as well because they asked him about it and how he felt and everything like that. So I don't know if it was like a, Tommy gets the first three drives and then Garrett gets the next three drives or Tommy gets first quarter, Garrett gets second quarter. And then I play whoever does better in the second half. Um, I don't really know. Uh, so realistically, the way that our offense was playing, I mean, whether Garrett Schrader got those first two drives or not, um, I mean, whether it was him or Tommy, we probably, we were in positions where we weren't going to really be so successful. Um, and I think they were just hoping that the change of pace was going to help. And I think, you know, obviously two minute drill, the, uh, other other teams not playing as tight a defense, you know, maybe a little prevent or something. But Garrett Schrader put together a pretty good uh, drive at the end that should have ended up in in a field goal. Um, but Schmidt missed a 42, 43 yarder. Uh, so when you look back, Tommy, I mean, he had some good and then he got hit a couple times and we passed a whole bunch. We got away from the run. And he um, he ended up getting sacked a whole bunch and started making bad decisions and started seeing the Tommy of the, the last couple of years. Uh, so, I mean, when it's scripted like that, it's tough. Uh, I liked, would have liked to have been able to see Tommy play so well to the point that you can't really put Garrett in and then you're really, you know, questioning. But just going back and forth, you know, sometimes – it did on Saturday, you know, when they when they say that when you have two quarterbacks, you really have none. Uh, yeah. Saturday, it, Saturday, it, it kind of looked like it. They exemplified um, that, it, it definitely. You know, and as far as the punter goes, I, I mean, I well, thought that. Well, punter... we'll we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Okay. Um, the uh, the Chiano rant turned into like one of the biggest officiating debacles that I can remember, as far as a sequence of events. I'd like anybody to get with me and name another one. So apparently, he, does he call a timeout or not? I mean, that's still in the air. He's on fire about something. At the time, I assumed it was 
a maybe a, a not a late hit, but some extra activity as, after the whistle. So you can read his lips at one point. I forgot what he said in the beginning. I'll have to watch it again. But he's calling refs over and screaming at them. And he's bringing them into his sideline. And he is screaming and pointing and everything else. And the next thing we know. No, screaming, make it right. Make it right. right. At least like 10, 15, 20 times. You can read his. Right. Yes. You can read his lips. And he says, make it right numerous times. But he said something at the very beginning. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. I mean. But so. So then the, the, the next sequence is the next play goes. Okay, there's some there's a there's a whistle and a little bit extra activity after the whistle. Well, now we get uh, now we get a a penalty there. Right. So there was there was offsetting offsetting penalties. And because there was something on the offense and there was offsetting penalties there, it was going to be third down. We were going to be okay. Dino Babers gets a personal foul called. For what? We don't know. But it couldn't have been much after we watched Shiano yell at the officials for a whole time out. Uh, two seconds of Dino Babers saying something. And all of a sudden now they're at the, what, the 11-yard line or whatever. And uh, first and goal. Yep. And that was a 0-0 game at the time. And it just that the whole thing was so confusing to Syracuse fans at the time. And the broadcasters are just speaking amongst themselves in some kind of way. But it's just so frustrating to have a zero zero game and have that be the pivotal moment where things start to turn. Now, we did come back immediately and score two plays. But Hmm. I mean, what what a mess was it three? Okay, Uh, what a mess. What an absolute mess that whole thing was. And Syracuse fans have every right in the world to be totally befuddled and pissed off about that whole thing. And Coach, obviously, he knows what he said. We don't know what he said. So take that for what it's worth. But at the end of the day, it couldn't have been if it was... It wasn't a long period of time is what I'm saying. So whatever he said in that short period of time pissed those refs off enough to throw a flag on him after they all got cussed out by Shiano the no, play before. No, and he wasn't even acting out. Shiano was looking crazy over in the sidelines. I didn't see Dino anything until he got the flag called on him. So, I mean, yeah, it was very confusing. It was really, really just, it, you know, it was, it was frustrating because of how the game was going, obviously. And you can't really, it was you thir- can't blame that. You can't blame that sequence like you were telling me earlier when we were talking. Um it's an unfortunate or an unfortunate sequence, and you see something like that where you're like, "Wow, like this coach basically just burn a timeout because maybe he wanted to see a play get reviewed or a call didn't get made or something like that." So he's screaming at these refs to make it right, and then immediately the very next play they make it right, right, right. with the bunny ears because yeah, again, air quotes, you know that was that wasn't uh, that wasn't a fifteen. 15 yard penalty. I thought there was a bunch of, uh, and again, you don't want to blame the refs because as <clears throat> much as there was bad refs, and we had eight penalties. Uh, what we have three illegal procedures or illegal formations. Yeah, on punts. Um, on punts, we had the one where Tosh Harris was going to get his, the first down when he came into the backfield, but he didn't like set himself or something. I mean, we're still just undisciplined and just continue to make mistakes, which ultimately comes down to the coaching. Uh, I mean, that's really the way that you look at it. I mean, yeah, there was those calls. There was the, you know, uh, what, the interference, right? The, the kick interference where I, I didn't think that we were close we enough to the guy. We didn't touch him. He wasn't touched. You I know, you and then, um, you know, I know that you did say this because, again, you know, take, as far as coaching and, and discipline and all that other stuff, we had five turnovers to their none. Um, three. And when, when I went, what's that? Three. Three. You said five. Oh, it was only three? Yeah, it was two two fumbles in the interception and garbage time at the end of the game. So it was the two fumbles. Tommy Stripsack and Taj Harris fumble. Oh, oh okay. Well, I don't, they uh, must have that wrong. Do, do, I, have it, do I have it wrong? Well, I'm, look, I'm looking at it. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that we have it wrong. I'm just saying I'm looking at, at ESPN and uh, it says five on ESPN. That's why I was. Uh, oh, I got, I got one interception and two fumbles from what I remember. And yeah, Garrett, Garrett Trader fumbled what it is one, now that but I'm got it, it. Yeah, ES, back. ESPN's just wrong. But either way, when I went back and looked at that Taj Harris uh, so did Pena, fumble, fumble Pena. I mean, that looked like his – it did look like his knee was down. You know, So there were some 
some plays and, and some calls that were bad for the most part, but you know we were just as bad, just killing ourselves as far as that goes. And then obviously with um, a couple of those turnovers, you talk about Tommy. I mean, we're down a touchdown and they're about to go up ten points, which would be forever. You know, asking us to score ten points in a quarter, we've only scored seven in three quarters, um, and they missed that really, really that just gimme field goal. And it's like, okay, we still got life. We go down and score a touchdown. Very next play, fumbled, or sacked, fumbled. And um, it's just, I, it's getting to the point after seeing this for two years, that, like, I just don't, I don't know. I can't, I can't deal with, but by the end of the game, that looked like every game last year and the year before. I, I just, you could put Benny Hill music to some of those plays and it would fit perfectly. So, yeah. I, I mean, all right, you wanted to get to the punt, the botched punt thing um, with with Coach putting in Colby Barker for James Williams. And James, I mean, he didn't have a terrible day. It wasn't awful. I, what, you, what, what these coaches see in practice, we don't know, okay? So, Coach thinks he's making a strategic decision in putting Barker out there. And the dude, the dude nets eight yards on it. Uh, Really unfortunate. He's a walk-on, I believe. And this is one of those deals where uh, this kid has never been in the big lights. And he's getting his shot and deep in his own territory, too. And um, a difficult task in itself. And he he hits it off the side of his foot. And he goes into the freaking... Someone gets a souvenir. So... Mm, that was really bad. It was really bad. It was really bad. And this was after a... Um, a missed field goal when we took the ball over and then what you were talking about the strip sack and all that they that whole that whole uh, yeah we got the ball back <laughs> yeah they went forward on fourth down we stopped them right and then yeah it turned into that after a couple sacks and right it was like so it's like constantly just shooting yourself in the foot over and over and over again with syracuse and you know beside I'll, I'll garrett williams never returned okay um, we did get McKin McKinley Williams back. He had a, a little bit of an impact in the game. Yeah, and uh, it is extremely good to see him back. And he had a tackle for a loss and, uh, with, with a sack. But, you know, it's good to see him back. We get one back and we lose one. And we don't know what's going on with Garrett. He never returned. Hopefully it's, it didn't look serious. The play didn't look that bad. So I don't know. That always scares me when it doesn't look bad and they don't return. That makes me nervous. Yeah, well, so, he left the game early last week, right? So uh, maybe it's something or an extension to that where he kind of left and he had to sit there for the whole week and try to get there, it right. And, th there's options, too. Now, Garrett Williams is a star back there, but there's options. And yeah. they seem to be doing okay. And oh, what? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, Adrian Cole. Say, as as and, defense, yeah, Adrian right. Cole and Cornelius we, Nunn. Right. We haven't seen Smurf none yet that I can think of, but right. So, um, anyways. Yeah, dude, speaking of that punt, just so I can get out there, like, like we said, we had already had, what, three illegal formations or two illegal formations on a punt. We've had a punt blocked. Three, I believe, right. Right. So we had all that happen with our regular punter. And it's just like, so I don't know what, why we're trying to get cute. with. I mean, we were, we were having a, a more difficult enough time punting with the guy that we gave a scholarship to to punt. You know, so um, sometimes it just seems like we try to get a little too cute um, when we really don't need to be. So, yeah, like I said, strategic decision and you think like you're being really super creative and it comes back to bite you like that. Obviously, in hindsight, there's a couple and of the things. play calling the play calling. Oh, well, hold on. Do we want to get into this now? I don't know if it, Probably not, it wasn't no. really. In All the... I know is that, look, we, we held Rutgers under 200 yards of offense. And we lost. We were clearly the better team. They were clearly the better disciplined and coach team. Yeah, and plus they were gifted. They were all but gifted seven points. The first seven <laughs> points to hit the board. That that whole yeah. that whole thing is an absolute mess. Yeah, yeah. And then that second touchdown they had. I mean, that almost looked. That's like something because of the way that this game was going. That was something that like that they pretty much they set up. Yeah. They set that – yeah, they had him going up the seam on the left side, but then – and they knew that they were playing a cover three, so you had one one safety middle, which was Rob Hanna, 
So you had Haskins run right up the seam on the left side, and then there was a uh, skinny post on the back side. So Hannah was pretty much um, – he was caught between two people, and it looked like they were setting that play up all game. They, hadn't, they didn't throw up down the middle like that, I don't think, until – until that point, so um, so it was kudos on them as far as that that play is concerned. But like you said, they they were gifted pretty much a touchdown, and yeah, it's extremely frustrating. frustrating. And because I really do think, at the end of the day, and, and you guys know, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a merry Christmas. And we can sit here and armchair quarterback this thing and and talk about what could have been, what should have been, but dude. This Rutgers team, they have a decent defense. They do. But it right. comes down to the little fundamental things. It's like, what was, what was Lombardi's line? When, line when, he, when he brought the guys in the locker room and he held up a football, he said, gentlemen, this is a football. Okay? Like, start from scratch. We, the, the little things are killing us. And it's one of those things, like you said, we can talk all the smack we want about some of the players, the plays, the way the plays were executed, but at the end of the day, these problems that I saw in this Rutgers game, is are, are many of them are at the feet of the coaches, in my opinion. Well, yeah. The, I mean, the coaches can't go out there and catch balls for you. you know, we well, that's drop true. Too, <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, from I our star-wide star, yeah. star wide receiver as well. So that, that hurts. That hurts when you're yeah. when your guy is going out there and and getting him floated in the basket and you can't he can't reel him in. That's a. I mean, he had a big day anyway, right? Yeah, he did. Uh, I, th- I think 122 he got a, yards. He got a fumble stolen from him, but I mean, he had eight catches for 122 yards. Uh, imagine if he hit some of those other deep ones. If he catches some of those other deep ones, so. Yeah. Uh. So the the montage finishes up like this. Coach says, "Look, we're not going to have a repeat of last year." Well. Besides, look, DeVito, I mean, I, well, I think altogether there were six sacks, unfortunately. But I don't think that that all falls at the feet of the offensive line. So with that said, the feel of this game, the look of this game, the mistakes in this game, the fundamentals that weren't fundamentally followed in this game looked a whole lot like last year. And... Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> so, so, uh, it's a cleanup issue and it needs to be cleaned up. And, and if it doesn't get cleaned up, I mean, we've already got the hashtag going and you guys know what hashtag I'm talking about. We've already got that going. It's week two. They've got to win. They have got to beat Liberty. They got to come out of these first four games, three and one from here on out. So, well, no, that's what we talked about, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and, and it, it, that's that's just the one thing with this is, again, it's very easy to be a, you know reactionary when it comes to, um, games and stuff like this. You know, we talked about last week. Remember when you were talking about Florida State, Notre Dame? You know, Notre Dame's a top ten team. Florida State gave them all I could handle. Well. Notre Dame almost lost to Toledo this week, and um, we know what happened to Florida State. Florida State lost to Jacksonville State on the last play of the game. So, um, the the true reality of this, and again, people can say what they want or whatever, because I think that our defense really is is good and played good. Um, is that we don't know how good this Rutgers team is. I I've listened to some people and read some things that they there's a lot of people talking that they think this Rutgers defense is a top three, top five defense in the, the Big Ten, and if that's the case, then this might not be a bad team. This it, might be a bowl team in the Big Ten. You don't know. So that's just – right now you just don't know. And you definitely don't know how good your team is when you have penalties and turnovers like we have. Do, do, um, drop passes, stuff like that. So you don't we – were, we were a better – we're the better – we have more talent. We should have beat them. Right. We could have we beat them. Right. And because of coaching, discipline, and and stuff like that, we we didn't, right? You know, and that's not to put anything on any specific coach. I mean, the buck stops at the head coach, uh, and it's up to him to, you know, trickle down the accountability. <laughs> so they uh, better right this ship quick. I mean, they have to because I mean, uh, we, and that's that. Ugh, we talked about the we talked well we talked about the, in the montage uh, the fans back. Now look. 
I still believe that I think there should have been more fans there. That's just my opinion. I'm not attacking any fan that didn't show up. I, I, I didn't show up, okay? So I'm not, it's not to say, it's not a knock on the fans at all. It is just, for me, looking across college football, the excitement around this program isn't there. The fans that did show up were tremendous. It was uh-huh. wildly loud in there. Joe, you said today when we talked earlier, you know, those 31,000 fans probably equaled 45,000 at any other place, right? So Mm -hmm. as far as volume goes. But I was a little disappointed in the empty seats. It was very visible on TV. And... um, Oh, yeah. But the the noise... My buddy Sabo sent me some pictures too. He was there. Yeah, well, uh, Captain Patrick shot me some stuff on Twitter before the game started. He said, it doesn't look like it's going to be getting filled up. And I was shocked by that. Okay, yeah, there's protocols. I understand there's a lot of people who aren't going to, um, that, that are going to dig their heels in. And I understand that. And they're not going to go get vaccinated, but you could get a test or whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm a guy who maybe if I don't get vaccinated, you know, I've had it. So, I mean, I see no point in getting vaccinated. But I'm not getting into that. But uh, a, a, posit- or a negative test to get in, I mean, yeah, okay, fine, whatever, you know. Um, yeah, well, I'm... There, but See, there's the people is, who don't want to do that. So is that hurting it? Is it the fear? Is it the fear of the? Is it just the fear in general of being around people? I mean, we look around college football and we don't see that everywhere. So for me, unless this is just a Syracuse thing, that's an excuse. Well, again, uh, it all depends on the situations. Um, obviously. There are people that are obviously there's the fear point of it that just are done going to things like this, you know, um, altogether for their own health. And that's that's their choice. Um, But like I said, I used to always go to games all the time, football, basketball, everything like that. Right. The beauty of Syracuse. okay, unlike like a place like Duke or some small places, especially when it comes to basketball and stuff like that, is that you you can just walk up you can get out of work at six o'clock and be like, sure i'm yeah. just gonna go i'm gonna go walk to, i'm just gonna go up and get a ticket it's because me. i know that they got space right so it's like a, th- that that was me that was me deciding in the middle of the afternoon yeah, I'm you gonna know go what? To the game. so so syracuse and then with football you know that we don't sell out so you, you know you're waiting till the end to see if a friend's got a ticket or see who's going and if you got guys going then you walk up you buy a ticket and go sit in the, up in the nosebleeds right but the best thing the most the best thing I've always thought about being at Syracuse and all that kind of stuff is that you get walk up crowds because it's just there's not a lot to do in Syracuse right especially again in the winter basketball everything like that right. it's like the thing to do right so right. You could be in the middle of the day. Something could pop up. Hey, I got tickets. Oh, okay. Hey, what are you going to do tonight? Oh, let's go to the basketball game. Like, that's traditionally Syracuse. Now, it's more of a, to your point, it's more of a spur of the moment type thing. Spur of the moment type thing because it's more of a, it's it's not necessarily like just a college town. Like, this is an area where just you grow up there and that's what you do because there's not a whole hell of a lot to do. Exactly. So now, Fast so forward. it's a local yokel joint. The Carrier Dome is a, yokel, a local yokel joint. It's always been. Yeah, and you know that's like a hometown how it was. bar. Now, if, if I was still living in Syracuse, um, and acting the same type or you know the same way, not getting season tickets and being a walk up, I can't now. I can't just turn around and say at three four o'clock you want to get oh, a test. i want to go to the game tonight because <laughs> i got to go get a negative COVID test. right so you just took complete in, in in the convenience completely away from it so of course i'm not going to go rush and try to get some real quick COVID test i'm okay i'm just i guess i'm just watching it at home on the tv whatever right you know and then there's going to be some people overall that are like no i'm not going to do any of that stuff i'm just going to watch it on the tv oh yeah right? so i heard 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 from i heard from both of those types of people on 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 twitter and right. you know look i so just you got an sec school that doesn't i mean like for instance we we went to ohio and played the ohio bobcats you didn't need to show proof of vaccine you didn't need to show proof of negative tests well in in syracuse we did i'm i'm willing to bet down in sec country they don't so you're gonna see full crowds and you're gonna see full things like that because you got all these students that wake up from the friday night 
parties in a drunken stupor and hey let's go let's go to the game let's, let's get go it, let's get it again right? right yeah so um that's why you know that's why it is like it is down there you know i'd be willing to bet that if there were the same rules and same protocols of every single college then you might not see all these schools filled up and i mean that's that's kind of where i would hang my hat if i had to um you go from november ish 2019 it's the last football game in the dome you know we're pushing two years really and you know, 650 days yeah and you know we did we had obviously basketball at, in 2019 until that was stopped in march but um the last football game though was is a different uh different scenario and i just guess i put my expectations high when i watched everything else going on and that's not a knock that's just fact that's just how i feel about it so anyways that's that it's time to hear from you the loud mouths from the loud house all right, fan feedback is brought to us by Spotify Green Room. Go there, download the app, go to the iOS or Android store. It's free. All you need is a username, a password, and an email address. You sign up, you follow us at Cuse Militia, and you sign up for notifications. And if you do so, when we go live, you will get the notification, and that will let you know when we are doing fan feedback. And we're going to do the Twitter, we're going to do the Facebook, but it would be nice to get you on here during live fan feedback you can request to speak or you can just you can just text in you can just be in the room and make your own comments and the best part is you don't have to just follow us you can follow anybody on there any topic anything you desire it's all there at the spotify green room app go there it's free download the app today all you need is a username an email address and a password do it do it now all right let's start with the twitter all right Yes, sir. All right, let's see here. At our files ninety. If you don't want to repeat last year, change philosophy or personnel for the for the QBs. Play the next two opposite of the first two. Schrader gets near all the snaps versus Albany to get comfortable with the system in action and starts against Liberty. See what we got and then make a choice. This has got to end, Ryan. That is a great idea. This has got to end. We have to figure out who is the quarterback of this team. If we do not figure out who is the quarterback of this team, we are not going to be a cohesive unit. I fear the worst, and that is that we are going to be a very close repeat of last year. And the offensive line is not going to be to blame, is going to be to blame, is going to fall at the coaches and not being able to pull the trigger and make a freaking decision on what's going on with the quarterback situation. It cannot continue the way it is right now because it's not fair to Tommy DeVito and it's not fair to Garrett Schrader and it's not fair to the offensive line. It's not fair to the fans. It's not fair, period. It's a horrible idea. You need to figure it out. You've got two more games to really do this thing before ACC play is in full swing and we have to have something set in stone. That's my opinion, Joe. I would like to see Garrett Schrader start, get the start against Albany. I think he should get the start against Albany. Let him get into a rhythm against Albany. If he's terrible, pull him. I think the I think then it would be obvious. If he does good, do what you did against Ohio and throw DeVito in for some garbage time just to keep him loose. Joe, what do you think? Yeah, there's a difficult decision that has to be made for sure. And I think that um that's probably going to be the the biggest thing obviously getting that was a very very physical team physical game um so we have to obviously worry about getting healthy this week and next week and i think we really got to start thinking about you know who we're going to sit for albany i would be wouldn't be surprised if you don't see um some some players out there uh you know i don't know um how much kingsley jonathan played this past week but um garrett williams you know i I don't think he's going to be in there. So, I mean, we'll see, but I just, I think that you saw some, I think you saw some frustration out there. I think, especially in the second half, there were times where, you know, um, I don't want to say that Tommy was showing up the receivers or the receivers are showing up Tommy, but 
it just seems like there's always a reaction if somebody messes up or if somebody, you know, if the ball isn't, you know, a good thrown ball and stuff like that. So it's really, it's only fair to kind of just make that decision and go with it. It's just a tough decision because again, it is tough, but you know, that's how what, that's loyal what... he is to Tommy and right. Tommy has his, Tommy has his moments, but then when he gets in the, in that the end of the game stuff where he's just lost in, in the, seems like he's drowning in the pocket until the inevitable sack um, and, and waiting until the fourth quarter to, to use your legs when, you know, he could have used his legs a bunch of different times in the, the first, you know, three quarters to open up some of the run that we completely abandoned. So, again, it's not all on them. You can argue whether or not the coaches are even setting these quarterbacks up to be successful. But at the end of the day um, – I think they got to have a long talk with the damn team and a long talk with the coaches and figure out what's going on, you know. And if Schrader's going to be the one that's going to be there for the next three years, uh, we can't, like you said, you can't just keep here a couple, a couple series here. Okay, now a quarter next game, now a half <laughs> next. Like, yeah, it's you not can't dipping do that. your, it's so, not dipping your toes in the water. Like we're playing now. This is let's go. Yep. Right. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. At 100%. Tim Abbott 44, our buddy Tim, not even with orange colored glasses can you be at all excited by what we're seeing. Dino's mythical offense never really showed up, and it's just been more of the same old shit, he says. So, uh, I mean, look, we wondered last week. Actually, we didn't wonder. We said, we, we are going to know against Rutgers. Damn it, finally for all once and for all, we're going to find out what we've got, what we've got going on and what we can expect. They're going to open up the playbook. We said all these things. <laughs> well, we, we assumed, right? We assumed, but we said, yes, it must be. It must be. But no, it isn't. Unless, you, unless you, you're still holding your cards that close to your chest against Rutgers. I saw the same thing I saw last week against Ohio. So is this it? No. I didn't see the same thing. I saw us throw what nine. Wait, oh well, we didn't time? run. Well, we didn't run the ball. That's for damn right. sure. So, yeah. I mean, so at the end of the day, I saw that we threw thirty-two times to uh, what eighteen last time, and that we didn't run the ball. So yeah, we did something different. I don't know if we went in the right direction. So Sean Tucker, uh, uh, according to Mike McAllister over at SI Syracuse, he did not touch the ball. After he scored his touchdown, which makes... He didn't get a carry. He didn't get a carry. I'm sorry. It, which makes no sense to me at all. And to only have 13, you're averaging over four yards a carry. What is that? Hold on a second. Yeah, it's 4.2. 4.2. So uh, that's excellent. I mean, that's an excellent, that's an excellent average, average carry yardage right there. So I don't know why he didn't get m more touches, but... When I was, what I was talking about mainly was the passing game. We know we have the running game. Why they abandoned it, I, I have no idea. But we yeah. we know we have that, and they should have just shoved the ball down their throat as far as the run, running game goes. But the yeah, Dinkin I mean, they and started stop the Dinkin and Duncan on, in the pass game is what I was alluding to. Like I I don't see it's oh. very vanilla to me. The offense on the passing end is very vanilla. I mean minus. Taj Harris going deep. Yeah. Well, sure, he got one. Yeah. Finally, yeah. Right, but I mean, fifty-one yards. Away, just Taj Harris running deep, then it's just dinking and dunking and slants and runs, right? Yeah. And Sean Tucker, he's I mean, he still averaged over four yards, but it obviously it got to a point where Rutgers were beginning to stop. You know, they were stopping him until that touchdown run. But again, it was a situation where part of the reason why Tommy DeVito, okay. Last week had seven carries for 47, 49 yards. Mm -hmm. Average seven yards a carry. He actually made his legs a weapon. And that's part of the reason why, a lot of the reason why Sean Tucker was broke able out to for do 181 it. and we were uh, allowed to rush for over 280 something yards um, and win that game. This game, fast forward, Sean Tucker really wasn't doing anything until he broke that one. But Tommy DeVito, he had eight carries for 20 yards, but he had a 20. His long, his long yard, uh, run for the day was a 20 yard run. So, I mean, up in, I mean, other than that 20 yard run, he was pretty much in the negative. It was so late he too. 
What's that? It was late. Yeah, it was late. Yeah, it was after we were already down 10. Right. So um, being down 10 and being as close as it was for so long, like there's no reason why we should have abandoned the run. Um, no reason why Sean Tucker should have only got 13 carries. Let, let me and, ask um, you. Let me ask you too, real quick. I'm sorry. What were we doing? <laughs> what were we doing at the end of the game? What was going on? Because I don't know. The, Dinkin and Duncan. Wh- we, we and stay, not even, dude. You can dink and dunk. Okay, do it towards the sidelines or something, or set up a screen so you know you can get out of bounds and stop the clock. The clock just ran. They're throwing stuff like. You know, right just outside of the hash marks. I mean, this stuff, it's not going anywhere. You're just wasting time. It just like, it felt, it was just like, so front. It was like, what are we, what are you doing? They were booed yeah. off the field at the end of the game. The fans booed him off the field. So. Well, I doubt that they were booing the actual players. So. Well, I don't think they were booing the players, but they were booing the end of the game. I mean, obviously. Could have been refs. Could have been the coach. Well, it's well, probably what they, they were. They weren't happy. I mean, I no just, one was happy. No, they weren't happy. But I will tell you what, like I'm not gonna be mad at the players after that because, like I said, no, that's not what I'm again, saying. It's at obvious, all. right? It's not what I'm saying. So I hope that the players don't take it like that because that's dangerous. But at the end of the day, like I saw Gary Trader go in there and I saw him get the ball first RPO, first RPO. Like I said, the drive didn't go anywhere. He kept it. And he ran it hard for about four, five, six yards. Um, that's a guy that you can tell wants to. And I'm not saying the time he doesn't want to play, but that's a guy that you can tell is like waiting, like just waiting, chopping at the bit, get waiting to get in there and run. Yeah, Meanwhile, Tommy had so many times where he could have pulled that ball from Sean, and there was nobody there, and he could have ran. He doesn't want to run. He only runs when he desperately has to. Um. And that's just not going to help. We don't have enough playmakers around us. Sean Tucker, he's a, he's a good running back. I mean, we got a good running back room. Um, but Taj Harris isn't going to be enough, uh, you know, through the air. And um, just some of the things that I saw Garrett do, um, being able, you know, with, with his legs on that last, um, that last drive, some of the throws he made, the throw to the sideline to Sherrod Johnson, the throw when he was um, – when he was uh, scrambling to the right, and Oops. then he threw back to a wide open Taj Harris that was in the middle of the field. Um, and again, he's six four, two thirty, bigger guy, can see over the line better. Um, and I just feel like he's he's a, a better fit for the for the mold that we need. We need our quarterback to be able to make plays. This is basically what I'm getting to for us to be successful. Um, that's just it. It's got to be yes. It's got to be a threat. It's gotta, they have to worry about something else. Uh, yeah, at, a game a game manager in this in this offense with, with who we have, it's just not going to cut it. Not against the competition that we play. At Michelle A. Milu, timing of quarterback changes was bizarre. The official inning sucked. I almost tripped a Rutgers fan, but decided to act like a grown up. Well, that's too bad. That's too, <laughs> that's too bad. You chose no, stop. You, you that you chose that route. Uh, yeah, I mean, like like I said, you know, it was weird. The quarterback thing at the time was was um, I didn't understand it either. Like I like I guess I just my expectations of it going into the game were different. I thought that they would mix it up a little differently. So, uh, at Q's water boy, f- brutal um, play calling seemed so vanilla. Punting on fourth and ten. On Rutgers 41 with seven left is with seven minutes left is raising the white flag. Go for it or even try a Schmidt 58 yard field goal. Wasted another great showing by the dogs on D. So that was one of the controversies of the day was that um, that punt at the 41 on fourth and ten. And we heard coaches explanation exclamation for it. And explanation. I can say it. See? Uh, and, there you, you, you know, it, we didn't put it in the montage, but he, he did say that, you know, if he gained four or five yards on third down, they would have done something on fourth down to go for it. So that decision in hindsight's easy, I think, to judge. Because if they go for it and they don't make it, and then that field posi- all that field position is lost, 
then it's just they're just going to get the criticism on that end. So, I mean, with that amount of time left, would you like to see them, you know, kind of go, you know, be a little bit yeah. exciting and, and, and try to go for it or maybe even try to draw them off sides and then call a timeout and regroup? That way there you can get a fourth and five or something. I mean, there was a couple of things they could have done other than just being like, okay, I punt it. You know, obviously, you know, it's hard to get yeah. into Rutgers territory all day and you're there and uh, you just kind of blew it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think so. Again, I don't know who, what Andre Schmidt's, what his long is um, as right. far as field goal goes. 58. What's that? I don't think he's doing 58. That's what I'm saying. So, but it's almost like I, I kind of wish, again, he, Dino wasn't going to use his time out there. You know, I get what you're saying about trying to get him off sides and everything like that. But um, one of the main reasons he punted was because he had three timeouts and he figured stop him in, you know. So, but yeah, I can see a situation where if you were going to punt, like you said, go out there, fake, maybe not waste the timeout, take a delay a game. Oh, take a delay a game, yards, sure. And yeah. punt it, right? So, yeah. um, there's definitely some things you could have done. And that's just the one thing that's so frustrating is like, you know, they're doing all these things like, oh, let's try this walk on punter and do this weird punt, you know, and it almost like, like you're trying to be smarter than everyone else in the room. But then when it comes down to just something as little as like what we just said, if you're going to punt anyway, you might as well go out there and try to get them to go off sides. You know, I mean, I don't think they're, it's not the realm of out of possibility that, I mean, Rutgers probably would have believed that they were going for it because most teams would have gone for it. My thing is, is I wasn't. There's nothing to eyes. lose at, the, at that point. There's nothing to lose if it, you try to draw them off sides. Right. And really there's nothing to lose. Five yards. There's nothing to lose if you don't go for it. So oh, true. At, this, yeah. at the end of the day, like, you know what I mean? It's just a situation where um, there's just nothing to lose one way or another, even if you don't get it on fourth down, even if he Schmidt misses a field goal that long. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's just one of those things where I just I don't, I don't know. I don't It's hard to say because, you know, and that's why he's the coach, because he has it's you know he's the one that has to make that decision but there's again, not there, there, there's there's not a, i mean look at that like, point too we our defense was pretty beat up they were running pretty they were starting to get better with the run game as the game went on as soon as they got the lead and as soon as we started getting in the fourth quarter because they ran more plays than, than we did as far as on offense so um i, I get being um it's very reserved it, it could have been a little more risky that's all I think that's the fans' frustration. And like like Tony said, it was very vanilla. It was. It was very vanilla. There wasn't a whole lot of risk taking. Wasn't a whole lot there was nothing right. there's nothing flashy. You know, yep. you're you're No, you're, I know. It, it's just very disappointing. You know, we're talked we've been talking about you know, we hear the uh, you know, rather be consistently good than occasionally great. Well, freaking let's Let's go. <laughs> We've yeah. been waiting years for this. And, and also, I mean, I think a lot of it had to do with the situation, too. You, you know, if it was like a one possession game or even if it was 10 points at that time, but the score was like 37-27 and we actually proved throughout the day that we could that move we could the score, ball a little sure. bit. Right. right? Then yeah. That would make a little bit more sense. But even as me as a fan, I'm like, dude, you're down 10. You've only scored seven points this game. Yeah. You, like, you're, I'm not, I don't have, I wasn't, and I'm, yeah, just like him, I'm definitely more confident in giving it back to him and your defense, you know, possibly getting a three now and out and using your timeouts and everything. But if you do that and they get a first down, the game's over. And, and I wasn't confident that they were going to get the, the, the first down, but God, it at least showed that you want it. Yeah. It almost seemed like for for a regular fan, that's that looks like you just gave up. Yeah, exactly. It does, and it was disappointing. And the broadcasters called it out, and fans were calling it out on Twitter, and it was very frustrating. So, at J June three 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 five five five, you move on from Devito now. Create a game plan for Schrader and put all the chips in on him moving forward. The legend of Eric Dungey grows with each passing game under Babers. What do you think? No, too, too, I mean, too early to call. Too early to call. I understand that, though. Look, there. It is too early to call. 
it, it's too early to call. But you know, again, and I hate to sound like I'm um, backpedaling on anything or trying to uh, pick up what I've already said, but wait, we got to see what happens in Albany <laughs> against Albany. I don't know. Oh I God, don't know. I don't know what else to say. And then, I mean, I think I'm almost on the board on board with like what you're saying. Just start, start Schrader at Albany. Let him have the game. Tell him it's his game. See what you can do. Start him against Liberty, right. and if and, and just reverse the roles, like what Ryan said. Yeah, I yeah. mean that's realistically going to be the best way to answer some questions because obviously, if Schrader goes out there and can't handle Albany and it's too close for comfort, then you know, well, I'm going to have to stick with with Devito a little bit longer, right? Right. So, I mean, and the thing is with me is that, like, even with the loyalty thing and everything like that, like, if, like we like we were, we were talking about, like, maybe it's just a development. It seems to me like just a development thing with Garrett Schrader because, like like we said, DeVito's been there for three, four well, years. Right. Yeah, if, he was, the, if he was the better guy and everything, like, why are you trying to give this guy more, you know? It almost seems like they're just kind of waiting for this guy to pick something up or, or just take it, you know? And, um... You know, he hasn't really yet, but I know that fans are getting real, real tired of the Tommy DeVito experiment, you know. Um, but again, every time this happens, every year after one or two games, the starting quarterback's called for. And no matter who it is, Rex Culpepper or Clayton Welch or you name it, <laughs> um, the fan base wants to see something. So, yeah, well, we, we are, yes, yes, we want to be entertained. Yes. Even, even Zach Mahoney. <laughs> oh, really? I'm just saying, we've called on walk, walk-ons. Oh, yes. oh well, of course. That yeah, have, that's what I day. mean. Yeah, like yeah. Our fans have called on walk-ons to start over scholarship players at quarterback position. Goes yeah. Now, does that come down to the, the actual kids now at this point, or does it come down to the coaching and or play calling? Yeah. All I know is I, that we're seeing every day, every year, really, every game, we're seeing more and more how effective uh, – Sean Lewis was and why he was the offensive coordinator here and why he got a head coaching job after that uh, 10 and three season to go play, uh, be a head coach at Kent state because um, ever since him and Dungy have left, the offense has just not been the same. No, it hasn't. Uh, Zach on Facebook. I was happy with my experience at the dome as a venue. The game was a different story, awful officiating sloppy pay play and that punt were just crippling. Uh, we didn't lose that game. We gave it away. Putting Schrader in when Tommy was on a roll was a head scratcher. I guess in hindsight, yank Tommy when he actually screws up. I don't think if they let Garrett play and settle in, he won't be the number one QB, though. He made the right reads, and his elusiveness showed promise on third down, on a third down completion. I'm sorry. I am struggling to read long stuff right now because my screen is busted all the hell. So bear with me. Uh, he made the right reads in his elus- elusiveness showed promise on third down on a third down completion. He had receivers open. He missed, but so did Tommy. This game was huge and it was lost in typical Q's fashion, which is inexcusable for a coach in his sixth year with super seniors. I mean, that is so true. That is so true because we, and I'm not calling, I'm not on the fire Dino bandwagon right now, but we have given him the benefit of the doubt. And at the very least, I have to say that I'm not going to be doing that anymore. Sixth year, it is time to show us something. Um, you've had plenty of, he's had plenty of time to get everything he needs in here. He's got all of his coordinators. He's got, um, his quarterback, he's transferred a quarterback. He's got super seniors, like Zach said. It's time. It's time to do something yeah. with it. And um, mm-hmm. people are getting impatient. And that's what it comes down to. Syracuse wins this game, which was a winnable game, by the way. Yeah. And and when Zach says we gave it away, we gave it away. This is a winnable game. You no, win it this. Was. G- and you- even if we won ugly, there'd still be people calling for certain things. So. But but who cares? It wouldn't be justified at that point. We'd start two and zero, going in to play Albany, halfway to a bowl game. Hopefully, you know. I mean, Vegas odds. So, well, I mean, on our 
the last podcast we had before the season when we had uh, Mike and Tyler on, this was one of the biggest games that we talked about. Yeah. This so like I said, I'm sorry. Sure. I'm just going by like what I look at like as far as, I mean, I'm not confident with Liberty at all. Unless they, like you said, they give it to Schrader, they give him the game and he takes it and proves it and then he's the starter against Liberty and I don't know what to expect, then, I mean, I'm not too confident in that game. But we all talked about this game possibly being the game that was going to get them, you know, over six wins or even into a bowl game. And and here we are. One and and one. here we are. Uh, Sandra on Facebook, it was lackluster performance, a couple of bad coaching calls and costly penalties. The defense was decent, but SU needs QB leadership. Didn't really see that today. It's easy to make. It's easy for me to make play calls from my couch, but I think they should have gone for on fourth down the one play instead of punt, punting, considering field position, etc. Punting was the wrong decision. Even the commenters said so. Yeah, so we've talked about that. Matt on Facebook, which, by the way, uh, lackluster. That's a word uh, you could use. QB leadership is um, the defense was decent, you know, and we've talked about that. Um, the, the defense just, they put the offense in so many good spots in that Rutgers game and the, and the offense couldn't capitalize on it. And it's just the, it's just a repeat of what we saw last year. And that defense is good and they need more help. Now we talked last week and this week too, they were at least kept off the field for most of the game. Like the offense wasn't as bad as they were last year as far as, you know, keeping the defense on the field, but it's got to get better. Matt on Facebook gave up 169 total yards and lost. Is that right? What's that? 169 total yards. No, it's a little bit more than that, I think, but that's okay. It's, it's under, it's like one, it's like just under 200. Um, and lost by 10, had the offense really rolling, but some really bad penalties just killed drives. First, dri- first drive we went without a penalty while we attempted a field goal. Dino has to clean up our penalties. We are clearly a more talented team and, and then lost. How do we get three illegal formation penalties on punts? Yeah, I mean, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's uh, – and just to let you know, uh, 195 yards. 195. And the time of possession was – pretty much Rutgers about 36 minutes, us about 24. But they only ran eight more plays than us. So our defense was out there a little bit longer than uh, – our defense was out there a little bit longer than a bright, our – a lot longer. Right, yes. A, a, a bright spot I just thought be worth mentioning before I forget, Michael Jones again, if I'm not mistaken, led the team in tackles last week. And two and a half for a loss for loss in this game – at the very least, he gets a honorable mention and a helmet sticker, um, doing his part and just an absolute animal, which is um, good to see. It's welcomed for sure. Peter on Facebook, last one. They are an embarrassment. This AD and coach both need to be gone. Dominated by Rutgers, this AD signed this coach to a long term contract after one year. He can't recruit and won't remove this quarterback. How many games does it take to see someone sucks? Well, no. yeah. So there was a bunch of those. I threw Peters in there because I just chose one. Uh, the, the, the fan feel is not good right now. So if we thought there wasn't a lot of fans in the Dome for the Rutgers game, well, I mean, I guess we'll see what it's like next week. No. Well, I mean, it's, this is what happens. You know, to, when it comes to the head coach, you know, um, you know, it, the leadership has to start from, you know, pretty much the top. Right. So I love how people, you know, like you said, it's getting to the point now where they're calling out the AD and head coach, which means that that's putting pressure on the AD, which means he's going to have to put pressure on Dino, which means Dino. And I think that's pretty much what I got from his last comment of the po- of the pressure was like that. We're not doing that last year. Like, we're not going back there. Like, so. Um, as you alluded to, I think there's going to be some very difficult conversations, some very difficult meetings this week, um, and going into next week, going into this Albany game, um, between coaching staff and players and really trying to iron this out. 
Well, if you know, in I'm not saying this is the case, but if if you know, he doesn't want to have to worry about being on the hot seat. He's going to make the tough decisions, and he's going to have to get these guys in line, and they're going to have to eliminate the stupid penalties, get back to the fundamentals of football, and play this game like they've played their whole lives. I mean, these the little ticky tack stuff that's killing them is totally avoidable, and unfortunately. Uh, it's what did us in against Rutgers, in my opinion. It's all mm-hmm. the little things. So, all it's right. Not an opinion. Well, true. Um, look, we appreciate all of you for hanging out with us. Um, thanks for tuning in. Look, hopefully this gets better. It's only one in one game. We can come back from this, right? It's right. Got to. It's got to. We'll hear from Coach tomorrow. He's got a presser. That's right. So. We'll listen to that for Joe. I'm Sean. We're out.